Hey guys, I'm Mark, and today I wanted to talk to you about cabbage butterflies. Cabbage butterflies like to lay their eggs on all different kinds of brassicas, kales, uh, cauliflower, cabbage, and uh, I'm just starting to see them on my kale here. In the past few days, I've been seeing the little white butterflies floating around the garden, and uh, it doesn't take long for those eggs that they lay on these leaves to hatch, because now I'm finally seeing some little teeny tiny larvae on the underside of these leaves here and I've got these little tiny holes so I thought I'd stop the bleeding before uh, before it commences any further and I just want to share with you how I do that. Um, basically there's several different ways you could do this. You could use row covers uh, that's what a lot of people do is just a good defense to keep the butterflies out. You can even just use like regular netting uh, just so long as the holes are small enough that the little butterflies can't get through. But once they're through and they lay their eggs on the leaves themselves, then you have to uh, explore some other options. We have a lot of cabbage butterflies in our area, and we've got a pretty big problem with them about late spring, early summer. And what I will do is I'll actually avoid growing um, things like cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli during this time of year. I like to wait personally until the fall once they have completed their life cycle. And by that time, uh, a lot of the, the smaller leaves, they get chewed up initially, like the baby leaves when I plant them, it's still during the life cycle, during late summer. But once the cabbages start to get a lot bigger or the broccoli starts to get a lot bigger, the life cycle ends and you know, I don't have to worry about them anymore. So as the plant is finishing, if you will, uh, cabbage worms are no longer in the picture. But anyway, I'm not gonna do without my kale. And I've only got uh, about 100 feet of it. So I'm gonna show you how I treat it. Um, basically, the way it all works is I use something called BT. It's Bacillus thuringiensis, or BT for short. And what it is, it's a bacteria. It's perfectly safe for humans uh, to ingest it. Um, you don't wanna drink it, obviously, but you can harvest your kale or your cabbage or what have you the same day that you apply this if you wanted to. Uh, but there's, there's a way that I like to apply that. I want to I show that to you. Uh, basically, you want to get, it involves getting the entire plant thoroughly covered, every single surface of the plant covered, because wherever those caterpillars go and where they feed, you want them to ingest that bacteria. And that's the way the bacteria works, is that they ingest it, the caterpillars ingest it, it gets into their gut, and then it activates a toxin in their gut, which poisons the caterpillar and basically starves it to death. Uh, so the way that I apply this to get it on um, all this kale, fully, full coverage, is um, I make it a little bit easier on myself first. This is a lot of kale right here, and kale grows really, really fast. And kale is a type of brassica that is convenient in this type of situation because I actually pluck the leaves off by means of harvest. I mean, you're not gonna do that with a cabbage or a cauliflower or broccoli, at least you're not supposed to. Um, but kale is convenient in that I can pluck off all the lower leaves and just uh, get rid of the eggs and the babyest little caterpillars that way first. And it also is, uh, it's, it's like a double benefit because once I harvest these, and you can see, I'll show you. Let me get a little bit of a close up here. I'll show you. See those right there? Those little tiny holes in that little tiny caterpillar right there, that's what we're talking about. And that's what we want to get rid of, or at least stop them from going any farther. Um, but anyway, when I pluck the leaves off, that gets rid of most of them. And it also makes it easier for me to spray because now I'm just spraying this little teeny tiny plant instead of spraying all this kale, which you could do and which you would do in the case of cabbages or cauliflower or broccoli or something like that. But, uh, but for my case, I'm gonna harvest all the kale, I'm gonna wash off all the little teeny tiny caterpillars that are on there already, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and spray these little plants. And the trick is, whenever you're spraying this stuff, or really anything that you spray, regardless of the chemical, is you usually wanna get full, full total coverage. So I'm already pumped up and ready to go. I already mixed this up earlier. Um, this particular brand of BT, says to mix one tablespoon per gallon. So go at that rate for your sprayer. Uh, but it may vary a little bit from brand to brand. So definitely always, always, always read the label on whatever you're gonna spray and follow the directions um, very uh, religiously. Anyway, I got my sprayer here. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit. 
That is one of the things that it tells you on the bottle is you want to constantly keep it agitated. And then basically it's very simple and straightforward. I just soak down the plant, make sure I got all directions. And I want to get it in all the nooks and crannies and crevices or the cuticles. They're called the cuticles of the plant where the uh, stems come down and just there might be something you never know where something's hiding in there. These little guys can get everywhere. Um, so once I know I'm thoroughly covered, then I'll just go on to the next one. And uh, wow, look at that. There's a, uh, there's a little egg here. I think, it's a, I think it's a robin's egg, but it looks too small to be a robin's egg. I don't, I don't know where that came from or how it got here, but that's definitely a bird's egg. Maybe a snake carried it in there. I don't know if you have any idea of what this is or how this got in here, uh, leave me a comment. I'd be curious to see. There's no like tall trees around immediately. Um, so it couldn't have like fallen out, fallen out of a nest. I mean, something must have carried it there. I'll just put it back where I got it from. Maybe I won't harvest that plant. I can't imagine it would stay alive in the shell. Anyway, um, so that's what I'll do for the remaining, uh, the rest of the kale here. It has been a week since the last time I picked this kale, and I did a video about that for um, uh, kale, something about superfood, the title of it, but I, my other kale video that I just did, you can look it up and you can see how big it was just about a week ago today. And uh, you can see how much more I've got already. So when I soak this down and when I spray this uh, BT on there, it's usually you're supposed to do it about every, every five to 10 days you wanna reapply. So this is a great time to apply when it's small like this because the plant is going to grow and the next time it's ready for an application is when it's going to be ready for harvest again. Um, and I'm, do, do, I'm going to do the same exact thing that I just did here, but over and over and over again as I harvest throughout the season. Anyway, um, oh, one more thing. I wanted to, if you were wondering what that was down there on the end of the bed, I took this out earlier for a little bit of a show and tell um, because, well, these are radishes that are also growing in this bed. And that's what's in the jar here. And since we were talking about beneficial bacteria, well, BT is a beneficial bacteria for us, I guess, in terms of what it does. But uh, I'm, I, took these, uh, I took these radishes and I'm fermenting them in a little half gallon jar here. And I just threw in a little bit of the green onions that are growing there and uh, some of the radishes. And I used two heavy tablespoons of salt to uh, four cups of water. That's my, that's my ratio for the brine. And then that's just a river stone that I scrubbed off real well. And I use that as a weight to keep these all down here. Um, you can see a couple little radishes slip by and a couple little pieces of green onion. So I'll, I'll fish those out of there, but this is gonna, these radishes are gonna produce, uh, they're gonna culture bacteria inside of here, really good beneficial bacteria. That'll be great for me, nice probiotic. Uh, and I'll leave them in here for about a week in a nice cool, dark place and uh, and they'll ferment up real nicely. They're already bubbling. I, I only, you can see I just cracked a little, little bit. I only put these in here last night and they're already bubbling like that. So you can see they're, they're kicking already. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, that's what that is. And, uh, and anyway, that's what, uh, that's what I think I'm gonna wrap up with for this video. That's my video about kale, BT, and cabbage butterflies. I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.